Um, I'll, I won't count to five. I'll, I'll just say that I noticed that Bony's missing a leg and I might need to call CPS. Yeah, he's, he's, he's called her. He's, he's lost a leg. He's fine, no, he's fine. It's because, well, you can't see Bony on screen until I move. And he's like, oh, he's Bony, there's a skeleton behind you. Skeleton, let's go. You're fighting so you can watch everyone around you die. Think, Mark. So welcome once again, folks at home, to another episode of Wiki Weekends, the series where we scour the lengths and breadths of the internet to find wikis to talk about things. Yeah, that's right, and we do that. Yeah. No, I mean, that's roughly what we do, yeah. Perfect, yeah. And as always, I'm joined off camera and off screen by my friend Lucas Holland. Say hello, Lucas. Hello, Lucas. And today we're talking about what, you know, a pretty big topic online right now, Omni-Man. I've seen those screenshots of people have been sharing of just like looking at the, the like the perfected ass cheeks of Mortal Kombat <laughs> Omni-Man. <laughs> okay, so we've got references. So we're talking about Omni-Man today because... Um, Invincible Season 2 just started airing, like, the day we're recording this is, like, the premiere was yesterday, November 6th, so I think it was yesterday premiere, or maybe a couple of days ago, around now, and then it'll be in Mortal Kombat, like, later this week, so it's a pretty good time to, you know, ride that algorithmic train and talk about Omni-Man, but yeah, the trailer where he's got the perfectly sculpted round ass, <laughs> it's so round! Well, that's the thing. I like, guess that's the only be. thing I saw shared about the trailer was just his ass cheek. I guess it would be though, wouldn't it? Because like he is like mm. the pinnacle of like human. He's not. He's beyond human. He's a Viltrumite. And Lucas, you've not seen Invincible yet, have you? So I guess this might help convince me to watch it because I watched a bit of episode one, and there's something about the animation style that really turned me off it. Okay, so just you're gonna have to ignore that because. In, I say like uh, Invincible and the boys like airing back to back on the same like thing like Prime is creating some of the best superhero content right now because the boys is a deconstruction of the superhero genre whereas Invincible is just showing you how it's done. Like, for example, like, um, before season two of Invincible came out, they had, like, a little, like, a preview thing where it's just a story about one of the characters in it, Atom Eve. And it's, like, her backstory, and it leads kind of into season two, which is this thing, like, well, here's a character who's going to be important to the overall story. You don't really get much of her in season one. She's there, but you don't know too much about her. Let's just give her a standalone episode to tie people over between season one and season two. And I contend that the last ten minutes of that, like, little... Like, um, like bonus episode is one of the best animated superhero fight scenes. So there's going to be like better animated stuff. Like people say there's anime out there that's better. Like superhero fight scenes in animation though, that might be one of the best ones. And specifically, it might be the best Green Lantern fight that's ever been committed to like animation or indeed any piece of media. Okay, so I knew that um, they roughly had, you know, characters that were, you know, Omni-Man's a Superman. That's of course, like a yeah. Omni-Man is allegory. Superman. You don't have the laser eyes, but he's, he's Superman. And I didn't realise they weren't as, like, parody-esque as just, like, having a Green Lantern. Oh, it's that thing. She's not Green Lantern, but her power set is somewhat similar. She has the ability to manipulate matter. So she can create constructs out of like matter, but the like, the, like I said, like the ten minute fight scene at the end of a standalone episode is probably one of the most like because the other thing we always talk about, Lucasoft, it's annoying when superheroes don't use their powers in interesting ways; they just punch things. And the Green Lantern might be one of the most frustrating, like versions of this because the green lantern like they say you can create anything anything you can imagine you can create with your green lantern ring for example the justice league unlimited show which is a fantastic show but every fight scene with the green lantern he just shoots a laser beam with his ring get those soldiers out of here i'll cover you and that's it or like it's a big fist he makes a big fist and like I guess like you had like the Ryan Reynolds movie, which it's bad, but I did like it's somewhat interesting. Like where 
oh, lift up like this big, like these fake Green Lantern bricks. And he makes like a wall, but then he's got to like put the, the pylons underneath to make it stronger. Or like later in the film, where like um, he builds like the the race car course because the car like flies the off. Like the Hot Wheels track to save the car, yeah. Which is interesting. And that's the thing, as bad as that film is, at least that's an interesting application of that power set because that's one of the most frustrating things about watching superhero media where they'll establish the character can do all this stuff and then they just punch things. <laughs> And, like, you know, a lot of people get punched in Invincible. Don't, don't get me wrong. A lot of people get punched. <laughs> but one of the things yeah. that's great about Omni-Man, and, like, Omni-Man is the Superman he can fly, he talks about how his powers work. And, like, when he, like, teaching his son, when he, cause the story is, like, he's Omni-Man on Earth, he has a son, son develops powers, and he tries to explain them to him. He's like, well, how do you fly so effortlessly? And he tells him, like, well, you control your body in the air. You, like, you need to pivot with your movement. And like they explain how the powers, and that's another thing that we always talk about, is like they don't explain how the powers work, whereas they do in this. It's, and it's like, for example, Omni Man, which we'll probably get to, another, like he can't breathe. He can't breathe in space, but he can just hold his breath for a really, really fly, long time, so he can fly through space. Yeah, and he can fly fast enough that he can make it from one planet to another. Yeah, but you know, let's just get an overview of like Omni Man before I like, you know get too deep into the weeds. Nolan Grayson is the deuterogonist of Invincible, serving as the main antagonist of season one, and will return in seasons two and three. He is a Viltrumite and the superhero Omni Man, as well as the father of Mark Grayson slash Invincible and the husband of Debbie Grayson. And just some basic biographical information about him here: real name Nolan. Which is like, but they, no. which is Noel Arn, but then he just um, anglicised it to Nolan. His aliases are Omni Man, of course. He is a Viltrumite. And do you, wanna, do you know anything about Viltrumites? Because this is a, one of those things um, that's like, it's really dumb, but I kind of love it. Isn't it the, like a warrior race similar to like Saiyans in Dragon Ball and they go and take over other planets? Very similar, yes. But the name Viltrumite is uh, reference to this Viltrum. That's what that is. Oh. And every male member of the Viltrum uh, Empire has a mustache. <laughs> Just one of those things that like every male mem every male Viltrumite has a mustache, and they say a mustache is a sign of power in their culture. So that's why they're called Viltrumites. It's a, a reference to that. And, um, it, uh, aren't they voiced by J.K. Simmons? J.K. Simmons, yeah. Who's earning his yeah. fucking paycheck? I'll tell you that. <laughs> he is earning that paycheck, but. I was just going to say, you know, speaking of a man with a strong moustache. That, that's the one, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> the thing is, I just love just moustache. It's so powerful. So, born on the distant planet of Viltrum into an imperialistic race of super beings known as the Viltrumites, Nolan was indoctrinated with the Viltrumite creed of conquering as much of the galaxy as possible to assimilate other worlds, species, and civilizations into the Viltrumite Empire. And, uh, like, one of the things about Viltrumites is that, like, they live for like thousands upon thousands of years. And there's a couple of like interesting things. Like obviously he's Superman, but some of the interesting distinctions between Superman and Omni-Man, one of which is, is that Viltrumites live for thousands of years. Like they're not like Superman's immortal, but they just live for thousands of years. The older they get, the stronger they get. And then a detail that I really like is that Viltrumites are so strong that their DNA basically overpowers the DNA of near enough any other creature. So they can breed with almost any other race in the universe, but you will almost always get a Viltrumite out of them. See, now that brings me to a question, Carl. Mm -hmm. What happens when a Viltrumite breeds with an Asari? We don't know. Well, I guess we'll never find out. The well, presumably the Viltrum, um, the Viltrum DNA would take over because they say that like one of the speeches they have when like uh, he's talking to his son. So there's going to be some spoilers for season one here. So apologies, Lucas, but the season one's been oh, out yeah. for a couple of years now. And he says to him, he's like, well, your DNA is like 99.99% Viltrum. Like, like it's almost entirely pure. Our DNA is that strong. You will live for thousands of years. Because like, yeah, okay. and then one of the things that he's trying, like when he's trying to convince his son, join the Viltrumite Empire. He's like, no, I want to protect Earth. And he's like, one of the best parts of the entire series where he's fighting his dad. You presume he's seen all the ways fighting his dad, right? Uh, I've seen little like gifts and stuff clipped out, but I have not seen the full fight. Like. Well, he has a fight with his dad, and like he's trying to convince his son of like, and he says to him, "What would like you will live to see this planet crumble to dust? 
in a thousand years, nobody you care about will be alive. What will you have? What are you fighting for? He just looks his dad in the eye and delivers like that finishing blow. Like, I'll have you, dad. <laughs> and Omni Man just like he gets him right there and he flies off because he can't he can't deal. What will you have after five hundred years? Oh, you, Dad. I still have you. It's such a good line. It's like, what will you have in thousands of years? I'll have you. And you have this like amazing like, and you say like, the animation didn't really grab you, but the really great detail is, Omni Man flies into space so fast, all of the blood just burns off his costume. Oh, that's cool. Because he flies like a thousand miles an hour. But you know, speaking of which, let's talk about you know appearance, personality, and powers and abilities. So. In appearance, in spite of being thousands of years old, Omni-Man's physical appearance is portrayed as that of an individual in their middle age, ex exhibiting a commanding presence and possessing a well-built, powerful physique and big round ass. <laughs> it's so round! It's so defined. It's so defined. <laughs> Oh, it's just, you know, like a more, thousand yeah. years of squats get a two car. That's the one, yeah. Control. I actually think you say like Viltrumites have complete and utter control over all aspects of their body at once, which is how they can fly. And when he's like teaching his son to fight, it's like one of the things that I like about Omni Man is that he fights so interestingly compared to someone like Superman. Okay. Because he's so in control of his body. Like he fights really like interesting, like because his son has those powers, but he's not like he's not had a thousand years of like training on how to use them. Like he's like a lot more wild in his thing. But like Omni Man is so precise in his fighting style. With us, we can freely move ourselves through physical space. That's how we fly. So we don't have to pivot on our feet and push off the ground. We can literally push off anything. We can create our own leverage. Good. But try it a little more like this. Like what? Like it's just it's pure efficiency and brutality. It's it's so good. And that's why I said like the I love their take on superheroes. Like I said, the Atom Eve bit, where she's just she's a better Green Lantern than Green Lantern is. With the shit that she's doing. That was just like a bit where she's um uh, like she puts up a shield to surround herself, like, and the shield breaks, then she turns the shield into armor and then fights with that. <laughs> and it's just like, that's awesome. Why does like, why does the Green Lantern never, ever do this? Yeah, it's not often that, um, like, obviously you see Green Lantern in, like, the air bubble a lot. But it's she, not she often does, that, like... She does make the bubble quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, fair, but it's like, Green Lantern doesn't often, like, strap a bunch of hard light armor to himself. He does in the comics. And that's the thing that we always talk about one of the, the best things, of, of the one of the best little Green Lantern moments is his back throw in fucking Injustice where he just builds a brick wall <laughs> out of Green Lantern bricks and then kicks you through it. So like you should do that all the time. That shit's awesome. I love that. And as, and, uh, as well, just like, you know, it's not very creative, but I like the idea of just... I think his other throw is like he just drops a bunch of bricks on your face. Uh, I think it's a bunch of like um, uh, like pylons or something, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And then we have personality for Omni Man. P Omni Man initially shows the persona of an idealistic superhero, brave, heroic, and willing to sacrifice himself for others. To the average viewer, his status as a hero was certain and undoubted. Eventually, though, he revealed his true nature over the turn of the show. He appeared to be a loving husband and was a good father, even though he had high expectations for his son and they were demanding. These expectations were usually kept in check by his wife. The most his Viltrumite heritage showed would be from his ideology towards the responsibility of being a hero. However, he had a hidden personality that is more true to his Viltrumite heritage. His Viltrumite side shows he's ruthless and loyal Viltrumite who, com who commits horrific acts for the Viltrumite Empire to conquer Earth and indeed many other planets. Due to his species as virtual immortality and indoctrinization into the Viltrumite ideology, he sees beings as weak and inferior and views their purpose to be conquered. If they resist, they are to be subjugated violently. I do love your mother, but she's more like a a pet to me a pet this is the only way mark don't touch me calm down i will not calm down this is insane yeah so i'll say like i, I did watch the start of episode one and i was confused of like so what is it that you know makes him be a married man then if he's such like an evil dude is it literally to breed 
Yes, so like, you know, I'm getting a little bit, like, again, deep into the weeds in this, like some of the comics which I've read and some of the show. But basically, he has to just scout out, like, you know, like again, the Goku thing, like, you send them to Earth, like, because they realize, like, try to take over a planet by planet with the entire Viltrum army is, it's too costly. They can't, they spread themselves too thin. But if you just send one Viltrumite, because one Viltrumite is stronger than pretty much an entire planet. Like, you're not going to kill a Viltramite in one-on-one -on -one combat. Send one, figure out what the deal is, and then, once you've figured out, because obviously they live for thousands of years, you can take 20 years to figure out how a planet functions. Go there, yeah. breed with a member of the local population to create a new Viltramite, you know, expand the empire. Our DNA is so pure, it doesn't matter what the species is, you will have basically a Viltramite. And then, once you've figured out how the world works, just take out all the seats of power in just one, like, blitz attack. Okay. Yeah, because I was wondering, like, he presents himself as, you know, this caring husband and father, and I was like, but when you've got the son, and you have the power to take over the planet, presumably, like, what's the point in pretending, like, keeping up the pretense? Yeah, and that's one of the things that, like, towards, like, the end of the series, you see, like, that little bit of doubt, that flickers in his eyes, like, when his son says, I'd still have you, like, he, in that moment, realises his mistake, like, he loves his son, which is something, and he has, like, a flashback to, like, him as a kid, and, like, you know, he remembers, like, you know, enjoying time with his son. And that's kind of, like, again, like, the Superman allegory there of, like, the Superman, the Saiyans. It all, like, kind of gets blended together. But he realises, like, he's more human than he would like to let on. And he can't deal with that, so he just fucks off. But, you know, <laughs> speaking of, like, being a Viltramite, powers and abilities. This is the stuff, Luke. The Viltramites are fucking redonkulous. Yeah, I remember, I think it was a clip for um, when I was editing a fat theme video where you mentioned, like, he flew so fast he like burnt a city down. Yeah, so Viltramite physiology. So as a Viltramite, Omni-Man has a wide array of abilities common among his race. And that's the thing. Like, Omni-Man isn't really that strong a Viltramite. He's like an average Viltramite. Like, he's just a dude. Like, by their standards, he's just... He's pretty good, because obviously he's thousands of years old, but he's nowhere near the top of, like, their power level scaling. It's like, there's dudes in the comics who are like, do not fuck with these. And there's <laughs> even, like, a guy who appears in the show who's like one of the most powerful beings in the universe, and it's like this guy called Battle Cat. And it's really funny, because it's okay. one of those like subversions of like, oh, it's just like, they're fighting a random like villain, like Machine Head, and it's like, oh, he brings in like a bunch, he says, oh, I'm not really strong on my own, but I have money! And he just brings in a bunch of like, jobber villains. But it doesn't matter, because like I said, Invincible's right, I'm out of my league, except I've got money! Oh shit. And you think, oh, it's gonna be that scene in the in like the superhero show, it's a bunch of jobber villains and you kick the fuck out of them and then the villain goes to prison. And one of them just this big cat man called Battle Cat. He just walks up and he's like, okay, so Battle Cat, I'll shrunk up oh Battle Cat. He just fucks them off, he just kills everyone. <laughs> And it's just one of those things of he just comes in, and the way I've seen it described is, this is like if Kingpin hired Thanos to beat up Spider-Man. Oh like, it's, it's that brutal, like, the power level difference between them is that brutal. And he ends the thing of like, there is no sport in killing insects, and just fucks off. It's like, I'll be back in season two. This battle is beneath me. There is no honor in killing insects. <laughs> Which says, like, you know, his powers include um, superhuman strength. So Omni-Man exhibits an extraordinary magnitude of superhuman strength, thereby elevating his standing as one of the most robust entities in the cosmic realm. He possesses the extraordinary ability to flex steel, effortlessly penetrate through walls with his punches, and hoist gargantuan objects. The sheer magnitude of his power is demonstrated by his ability to create shockwaves and, co and co concussive forces merely by clapping his hands or landing forceful blows. Or, you know, clapping them cheeks. <laughs> And that's where you have, like, just the fights always fighting his son on a mountain, and just every punch he throws causes, like, an avalanche. I love shit like that. It, it's, and that's the thing, like, the very few bits of media, superior media specifically, like, shows how powerful characters actually are. And I think give props to Zack Snyder on this one, is like, is the closest we've ever had to Superman feeling like Superman. And like, when they have that Zod fight and every punch is a sonic boom. Yeah, yeah. Like, does those action scenes very well, just maybe Everything not the rest else, of the yeah. stuff. Which is why I just watched Invincible. It's like, it's, it's Superman, but, you know, the story's good. And then Superhuman Speed, speaking of sonic booms, he can travel 
Um, we can travel at tremendous speeds, allowing us to travel anywhere in the world with transcontinental flight taking in mere minutes, if not seconds. With his speed, he was even able to create tailwinds powerful enough to wipe out entire cities. And that's where he goes to like the Flaxen Empire, which is this like, species of aliens. And he goes in, he just flies in a straight line, um, catches on fire, and his like, sonic boom just wipes out an entire city. <laughs> And all he does is just crisscross across um, uh, the entire planet and wipes out virtually the entire planet in a few seconds by just going yes. so fast that everything behind him catches fire. That's pretty terrifying. Yep. And that's one of those things where you see, like, cause he's pretty strong throughout the show. Obviously, he beats up a lot of people. You just see him, oh, this is him not holding back. Mm. And just all he does is fly in a straight line and everything dies. He doesn't even throw a punch. Just He flies yeah. and that's it. <laughs> That he can travel, he's, he can travel at faster than light speeds while just holding his breath. So he gets to the universe, superhuman stamina. He can sustain physical exertion for prolonged periods without becoming fatigued. He can engage in extended battle, perform acrobatic feats, and face various challenges with no signs of exhaustion. Again, like he can fly across the universe while just holding his breath. Mm -hmm. Superhuman durability. His incredible durability showcased that an entire day as he demonstrates an exceptional ability to withstand energy-based attacks. He has resistance to laser and plasma beam assaults. They are virtually, he's virtually impervious to all that stuff. Um, uh, he, despite being momentarily knocked out during a fierce assault by the formidable Hail Mary, Omni-Man's son swiftly comes to his rescue in a brief but merciless clash. He engages in a fierce confrontation with Immortal, only to face a momentary rage-induced confrontation with his own son. And it's just that thing of like, he just kicks the fuck out of everybody. Like, no one can touch him. Like, the closest you get is like, they annoy him. That's the thing. Like, and there's even right, a moment yeah. in the show where like, Omni Man's flying to like, go kick like, his son's ass. And like, the guy who's in charge of like, the secret superhero like, government agency says, well, there's this thing we've spent about $3 billion building. It's called the Hammer. And it's basically just an orbital like, bombardment satellite that fires a laser. And okay. it's, it might be one of the best animated things in the show, of a, a show full of awesomely animated things. And the noise it makes is just this one, one, one. And Omni Man just looks up and goes, You wouldn't dare. And it just hits him with like just the fucking the glass cannon from like Halo. And it doesn't even hurt. You wouldn't dare. It just knocks him out for like a split second. <laughs> it just annoys him. And then what What do you do when you've like, you've used your trump card and then he realises you ain't got shit? What's the, basically the final episode of the show is like, we are literally, this is everything we have. We are throwing everything we have at him and all, and they even ask him like, are you, are you trying to kill him? It's like, well, we know we can't kill him, but we can slow him down. And that's all we want to, all we need to do is slow him down long enough so we can get to his son first. And that's right, it. Yeah. Just that idea of like, we know we can't kill him, but we can slow him down. It's the best we can hope for. This is pointless. You can't stop me. Yeah, you're right. I can't. But I can do the same thing I've been doing since I figured out you were a lying piece of shit. I can buy us a little more time. Be a minor inconvenience yeah, to it. Yeah, but they have like this monster and this is the only thing we've ever seen that potentially, that we even saw him break a sweat trying to fight. So we like we secretly keep it in like is this giant monster. We keep it in an underground bunker, give it every possible like technological upgrade we can, fill it with a cocktail of like adrenaline and drugs to just drug it the fuck out and then drop it on him and it still doesn't work. But it slows him down. <laughs> and that's all they can hope for. Is that is so good. But just like imagine that. Of just like we've given you literally everything, like every resource on earth put into like trying to stop this man, and it slows him down like a little bit. Mm. Not even a lot, just a little bit. And then like, yeah, 
he turns around and he's like, I'm not even considered strong on my planet. No, that's the thing, he's not. What are you gonna do? Like, Battlecat will probably kick his ass. Like, Battlecat's, like, super good. So, Flight, like every other member of the Viltrumite species, Omni-Man possesses the remarkable ability to generate his own propulsive force, enabling him to effortlessly navigate through environments, including the ability to soar and alter his trajectory mid-flight. This exceptional power endows Omni-Man with the ability to levitate even in space. And that's one of those interesting things as well of, like, just... It's not something this show does, but it does do it very well. And it's one of my favourite things in, like, you know, media where things fight. And that is, you punch someone really far, but then fly to catch them, and then, like, double axe handle oh, them into yeah. the ground. Always the coolest. It's always so good. And I want to say that's like a Dragon Ball thing as well. Like you know, they like Goku where he kicks them and like instant transmissions behind them to punch him again. It's always hype. Or like um, there's one that I always remember. I can't remember where it's from, but like Vegeta doing it of like kicking an enemy and then coming in with like the teleport elbow drop. Yeah, just to like the back. To the back. Yeah. Or one of my other uh, there's a, one in Devil May Cry as well, where Nero punches Dante across the room, but then runs fast enough to catch his leg. <laughs> before he go, hits the wall and then slams him into the ground. It's like, it's always hype. It's always the hype yeah. of shit. And it, it happens so much in the show. Uh, it says there's a regenerative healing factor. Um, his healing factor is so powerful he can regenerate from injuries that will be fatal to other beings. He can heal broken bones, torn muscles, and even recover from grievous wounds within a short period. And this is more often seen with his son, and he's like, the name Invincible is kind of those, like, jokes. If he calls himself Invincible, because like, I'm the strongest being on Earth, and he gets his ass whooped in every episode. Oh, but okay. the thing about Viltramites, again, it's the Saiyan thing coming in of, every time a Viltramite almost dies, they get stronger. I guess, you could say it's like a, baby. I guess you could say it's like a, um, uh, like a, a Superman thing as well, of, like, Dark Side. No, is it Dark Side? No, it's, uh, it's not Dark Side. Um, the big monster, Dark Doomsday. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, Darkseid is a character. Well, yeah, um, Doomsday, like the character, like, every time something kills it, it becomes resistant. It evolves to become more resistant to that thing. It's a similar thing with uh, Viltramites, where every time they almost die, they get stronger. Because, And that's one of the things of, like, I think ultimately Invincible becomes one of the strongest characters in the series because he keeps getting his ass kicked. And because he keeps getting his ass kicked, he gets stronger every time. Does he ever do that thing where Vegeta just turns around to Krillin and is like, shoot a hole in me? He almost does. Like, he does get almost cut in half by Battle Cat. Oh, okay. Like, Battle Cat hits him with, a, like, an axe and it nearly cuts him in half. And they say, like, anyone else would have died. But because you're a Viltramite, you just come straight back from it. And they have a great moment in the show where they have, like, a, like a little vial of, like, his blood. And they like, say, what, what are you doing with that? So we just try to figure out if anything can actually hurt him. So what, we've dropped every disease known to man, ev every acid. We've done everything. We can't even hurt his blood. <laughs> like, even his blood is invincible. And I, and I love that. I love that idea. It's, like, it's, a, it's one of my favourite little Superman moments in one of the live-action Christopher Reeves movies. Where they just have, here's a 100-ton weight supported by one of Superman's hairs. Oh, and that idea yeah, of, like, you know, the, cool. the strength and the invincibility extends to every part of his anatomy a strand of his hair to the museum so we can all have the fun of seeing how strong he really is here you can see a thousand pound load easily suspended by his single hair and that like so that isn't just like a big block of kryptonite that they're weak to or something like that well no viltramites don't have any weaknesses the only real weakness they have and it says it here um the standard viltramite weaknesses which is um overly sensitive hearing because the way they fly it's their inner ear that maintains their equilibrium, which can um, uh, be distorted, and it's one of the few ways to actually hurt them. Although, obviously, it doesn't really keep them down for long. One of the few ways they use to try and keep them in check is, like, sonic waves. But even that doesn't really work that well, if you can fly, like, a million miles an hour and get out of the area. Um, it just reminds me of, like, that bit in The Boys where Homelander just, like, claps the ears of the Daredevil yep. character. Is that what you're going to do now? I think there's like we have to mention like the uh, the death battle between Omni Man and Homelander, which is now going to be playable in Mortal Kombat One, where they say the only thing um, like Homelander could have even done to hurt Omni Man is like scream real loud, which he's probably going to yeah. do when he's fighting Omni Man. Because that's the thing we haven't really like covered the boys too much on here, but like we I want to do one next week yeah, when the boys starts. I definitely want to do a Homelander uh, episode. 
I don't. Well, we did a Homelander episode. I want to do another one. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm um, talking about Homelander. Because, like, Homelander is powerful in that universe, but if you power scale that universe to anything else, like, Homelander's weak as shit compared to any other, like, comic books. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I love, anything. like, the boys' universe. And every, like, people who like the show keep saying, could Omni Man beat Superman? No. Of course he couldn't. Like, he's not power. He's powerful in the show, and that's not the point. You don't, like, he's a Superman allegory. But he's not as strong as Superman because he doesn't need to be for the sake of the story, whereas Omni Man does need to be. Like, and I would say Omni Man is up there with Superman in his feats. Like, not gal- he's not like galaxy busting like Superman is, but he's still pretty fucking strong. Like I said flying through the universe fast enough to level cities with the speedy moves. Yeah, I'll clarify. Like you said, Omni Man could never touch Superman. I think you meant Homelander. No, yeah, yeah, Homelander couldn't touch Superman, and Omni Man probably could. Like, depends which version. Because like Superman, like that's the joke. We all, not the joke. The thing we always say is until like. Is it the Dragon Ball one where it's, could Goku beat Superman? It's like, well, no, because Superman's whole thing is that he's literally the best at everything. Like, he's the mm. man without limits. That's why it's always yeah. such a boring thing to say, could this character beat Superman? No, because nobody beats Superman. That's the point. He's Superman. And it's way more boring if, like, it's more boring to think like that instead of just saying, it's an interesting character. I want to see what exists or what he does within his own universe. Like, taking yeah. the idea of Superman and transplanting him into a different scenario. And that's the thing is like it's what if Superman was born, but like never really gave a shit and never learned to use his powers or anything because he never had to. Yeah, and it says here, just like you know, trivia about Omni Man, he is partially based and inspired by Superman from DC Comics. So you know, he has a similar power set, a similar appearance, similar backstory, but also he has many similarities with Vegeta from the Dragon Ball franchise. So both Vegeta and Omni Man were sent to conquer their respective Earths in the name of their races, but later spared them. They both have hybrid sons. Uh, both Vegeta and Omni Man are popular for their quotes that have spawned internet memes. It's over 9,000 and Think Mark Think, respectively, and both Vegeta and Omni Man have fully grown moustaches. <laughs> Don't bring the Vegeta moustaches. I know, this. I know. Don't you dare. Which is just one of those things like, yeah. And I'm not sure if that's like a deliberate thing on behalf of like, um, I think it's Robert Kirkland who created him. I wouldn't be surprised if it is because like, he's a huge dork. You know, in the good way of like, he just, he likes meat. I will say, like, you know, Robert Kirkland um, is way more fun than Garth Ennis does in the boys universe. Because we've talked about, those boys comics fucking suck ass. They're right, like, yeah. they are so edgy and try hard. Like, they are a, just a slog to get through. But the Invincible comics are really fun, and I'm really happy to see like stuff from it being adapted. Mm-hmm. And like such as like you know Omni Man the character, I'm really excited to see him in Mortal Kombat. I'm excited to see Omni Man in Mortal Kombat because, and that's the other thing people are doing. Well, how could anyone possibly be Omni Man in Mortal Kombat? It's like well, it's almost like it's a video game. Yeah, yeah. It's like how the fuck is like Sub Zero gonna fight Omni Man? It's like well. Okay, if you wanted the fight to be Omni Man walks in and punches him, his head falls off, you can have that. That'd be a very boring video game. In the same argument, like, how is Striker going to be Raiden? <laughs> is Striker to shoot you? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm curious to see what they do, because like, they've done little things like that with them, uh, those characters in the past. But either way, I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. Hopefully, checking out Invincible Season 1 and or 2. Like, Luke's check out Season 1. We could talk about it at a later date at the end of the, uh, the season if you do catch up with it. But otherwise. Hope everyone at home enjoyed the episode and tune in for the next one. Cheers.